Hi, and welcome to another PowerShell quick tip video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the commandlet of measure command. So this commandlet, we've seen it a few times in a few of the beginner videos and then a few other videos as well when we were comparing uh, different methods of doing something. Um, so measure command really tells you in a time value how long a certain commandlet will take or even a, an entire script block. So you can actually write multiple lines of code and it'll tell you how long that uh, block of code it took to execute. So this is useful to know, um, let's say you have two ways of doing something. You wanna find out which way is a little bit more efficient. So you can actually use the measure command to actually measure that out and see which one is actually better to use. So today we're gonna to be looking at the measure commandlet and doing a few examples and taking a look at how we could pipe things into measure command, how we can actually display the actual execution of the script uh, out to the console as well. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started with uh, two very simple uh, examples here for measure command. Uh, the one is the typical example that we've already kind of seen before. Uh, so we're going to be looking at array and array lists um, just because I find like these are really easy examples to show um, where you can actually see a very great time difference between the two. Um, so let's just go ahead and let's just set up the array here. So we're just going to set that up with my array and we're going to make that equal to an at symbol and then open it and close parentheses. And we are going to do a measure command. And we are going to do a dash expression. And we're going to do an open and close curly bracket. And then here we're going to do a for each. And then open and close parentheses, a dollar sign x in zero dot dot 10,000. And then after the parentheses here, we're going to do an open and close curly bracket once again. And we're going to do my array plus equals dollar sign x. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's run this set of commands here. All right, so here is the output. So we can actually see um, that it did take. Um, a total of 2,696 milliseconds or 2.69 seconds. Um, so that's not too, too long. That's actually fairly fast. Um, but let's go look at the my array list now. And we're going to make that equal to a new object uh, type name system.collections.arrayList. And let's uh, do the same thing here. Uh, but instead of my array, we're going to call it my array list. And we're going to do the dot add method on the dollar sign x. So if we actually run this one here, we see that the total milliseconds is only 31 milliseconds. Uh, so as you can tell, like that's much, much less, like 2,600 and. 60 seconds left, less. So it basically goes to not even existing. Um, and we can actually see, so this is 10,000 items and it took us uh, 2,696 milliseconds. Now, if, if all I do is I increase this to 15,000 and we run this again, we will see that this actually greatly takes a hit uh, so let's just wait for that. So now we have it at 7,478 milliseconds. Whereas if I increase the array list to 15,000, we actually still stay at around 33 milliseconds. And actually I can even do a 50,000 uh, record on the array list. And it only takes 141 milliseconds. If we do 50,000, uh, items in the array uh, with this computer's specifications. It'll take about like a minute and 20 seconds or so. Um, so the more items you get with the array, it 
takes greatly longer. And if you want more details on exactly why this happens, I would highly recommend going to look at my beginner series for the array versus array lists. Um, it really goes down to the back end way that how PowerShell treats arrays and treats array lists um, on why they perform so vastly different. Um, but let's go ahead and let's take a look at um, another example here, uh, which is actually the get child item. Uh, so let's do a measure command here. And once again, we're going to do the expression and we're going to do an open and close curly bracket. And we're going to do get child item path. And we're going to do the path here as C colon backslash scripts. And we want to find all of the script files. So we're going to do star dot PS one. And we want to make sure that it goes into like all the subfolders and recurses. Uh, so we're going to add the dash recurse here and that should be good. So if we run this, we get that it takes us 26 milliseconds. So once again, uh, it is pretty fast. Uh, now there isn't a lot of files in the, the scripts folder. Um, so if I had a lot more files in here and a lot more folders, uh, it would take a lot longer. Uh, so that is the reason for that. Um, but if we try to do a measure command, expression we do an open and close curly bracket here we do a get child item on the half here of c uh, scripts and then do a filter and the filter is going to be star dot ps1 because we want to find all the powershell scripts and we do a dash recurse and we run this one so here we go from 26 milliseconds to 22 milliseconds. Um, now, if it was a much greater difference, like let's say we had a lot of folders and a lot of files, uh, you would see that this one would perform a lot better with the actual filter parameter. Um, in the back end, uh, PowerShell handles this a lot better than just putting it in the path. Uh, so that's the little bit of differences here. This one is a little bit less visible, but if we run this, it's like nine milliseconds, seven milliseconds, nine milliseconds, and this one's four milliseconds, five milliseconds. So as you can see, this one is always consistently faster uh, than this one. Um, and of course, if there was more files and more folders, uh, you would actually notice this a lot more. Now, you might be wondering with the measure command, we actually can't see the output of the script. So we don't actually know if the measure command is actually measuring it properly as in making sure that the script is actually executing what we would actually expect it to execute. Uh, now we can actually output what it would show um, to, the, to the user if it was actually just running on its own. So, an example for this would be actually if I take this get child item here and we just put this at the top here and we run this, we actually get some output. Um, so we can see objects and app.ps1, um, variables, arrays. So there's all the videos that we've recently made uh, for the PowerShell 7.2 beginner series. Um, but when we do the measure command, we actually don't see any of the output. So we don't actually know, is it fast because it's actually faster or is it faster because it's actually not finding anything, it's not working properly. Well, we can actually test this out here by doing a pipe out default. And if we actually run this here, So here we have our output here, and we actually have the output of the command. Now you will notice that the amount of time it takes is a lot more. Uh, it brings it up to 108 milliseconds compared to the two or three milliseconds. And this is because it is doing a whole extra step. Um, it is getting the out, the results are getting piped to out default and then out default is outputting that to your console. Um, so you're always going to want to make sure if you're comparing, let's say these two, you're going to want to make sure you're comparing them with the out default um, altogether. 
So as you can see, it does vary in time depending on what other processes are going on on the computer at the same time here. So here we have like 15, 20 milliseconds. And here we have 20, 23, 19, 20. Uh, so it's still pretty much fairly the same. Um, but using that out default really lets you see um, what's actually going on. Uh, so you can actually test out your scripts that way too. Um, now, the other thing that we can actually do is you're going to see if we do a measure command, we actually have a input object. So if we actually put in an input object here and we just put in, um, let's put in an object here. So let's do a dollar sign value equals 10. Our input object is going to be value. And then we could do an expression our curly brackets here, and we do a for each uh, x in zero dot dot. And here we would put dollar sign underscore. The dollar sign underscore will actually use the value that's in that input object. And then in here, we could go ahead and do this. And we could just go ahead, display x to the screen. And let's see how long this takes. Uh, doesn't take very long, doesn't even take one millisecond. Um, and you can actually see that it works properly. If we do the out default, we will actually see uh, that it outputs zero through 10. Um, it takes six milliseconds when we output it to the screen. Uh, but that is really the way that you can use that input object. And even if you wanted to, you can actually also do a pipe. So if we did a 10 and we pipe that to uh, measure command, actually we could just copy this section here. We can copy the expression. Um, so the dollar sign underscore, once again, we retrieve that value of 10 that's coming in through the pipe. And if we do this once again, it takes about the same amount of time. And we have our zero through 10 and we have the amount of time that it takes. So as you can see, there are a lot of ways that we can use the measure command. You can pipe values in, you can use the input object to pass values in as well. Um, but really, you're really gonna wanna use them to compare two similar ways to do something and see which one is faster. Um, I know that I have a video on event logs that uses the measure command to see how much more efficient the different ways of getting the event logs we're getting. Uh, and that one, there was actually a very big difference. We were going from minutes to seconds once again, very similar to the array and array lists. Uh, so definitely give it a shot uh, in your scripts. Maybe there are ways to make things faster. It's also a way to see if um, doing concurrency or parallel execution would be faster for you because sometimes parallel, uh, parallel programming in PowerShell might not actually be faster because of that massive overhead that it takes to actually create the different threads. If it's more of a simple execution, there's no really waiting around. Uh, the measure command will easily expose that and basically show you that parallel programming is actually taking maybe 10 times longer than just running it um, in order. So hopefully this helps you guys use the measure command. Hopefully you guys can find some use for it in your environments. If you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know down in the comment section below. If you guys have a commandlet that you would like me to go a little bit more in depth with on these quick tip videos, please let me know also in the comment section. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.